All right, in this example, we're going to go through building a simulink file, and we're going to use the example that we did in class where we built a linear and nonlinear version of the pendulum. So I'm in the MATLAB uh, window here, and now I'm going to go ahead and click on this little button up here, as we did in class. You could also type simulink into the uh, command window of MATLAB. Uh, either, either way will work. That will bring up the Simulink browser as it loads up here in a second. There it is. And there's all these block sets that I've got over here. You can use, uh, you, you might have different ones depending on what licensing you have, but uh, we get a pretty good suite here with the license on campus. I can create a new model over here, so that opens a new folder, uh, sorry, a new file, a new little uh, area where I can uh, move blocks onto it. And we're going to start with uh, the integrators that we use. So those are under continuous. And there's the integrator. And I can go ahead and select and just drag it over, drag and drop. Pretty straightforward uh, kind of thing to do. Now I can go ahead and connect these things with wires. And it gives me this nice little tip. Oh, did you know if you yeah, use the control key, you can do this a lot easier. So we'll take that into consideration. Um, I can go ahead and find the sum junction under commonly used blocks. And that's there. I pull that over. Uh, move that over here. And here's the, what they're typing. If you hold down the control key, you get a different cursor when you're over here. And I just click and it automatically connects the blocks. I can open this up. And we see that uh, gives a list of signs. And we saw it's kind of a funny thing. The, the vertical bar there means nothing, or a spacer, and then plus minus. And now I can go ahead and attach all of this to a scope, which would be under sinks, so it's the things that data goes into. And I plot that there. I go ahead and connect that up again. And what we did in that system is we saw we had feedback. So for the linear system, uh, we just had simple, uh, simple gain. And again, you can go under commonly used blocks, find the gain block, or you can go under math operations and find the gain block. If I right click on that block, it opens up a, a series of, of uh, context menus. And under format, I can go down to flip block. All right, and that'll just flip it around. And you can do other things as well. To get feedback, I just go ahead and wire this all up again. And go there. Um, your choice of what you use here, uh, we used M divided by, oh, sorry, sorry, G divided by L. And I'll have to define those variables in the workspace. And then we also, in class, had a block over here for the mass. And what I'm doing here is if I, if I go, hold, go ahead and uh, click on the block and then press the control key and move it, it makes a copy. Uh, just little shorthand tricks. Uh, I'm going to flip this block around. And we had M was in there. And connect that up. And then we used a step input. Those would be in their sources. Use a step function. And line that up and connect that. And uh, let's see. I am missing, this should be not m, but 1 over m divided by l squared. If I'm recalling that correctly, um, so yeah, so I've got one over L squared is the right right value. Okay, um, so now we can run this. Only it's going to complain because we haven't defined G or L. So if I go into the command window, I can just say, oh, let's let M equal 0 0.25 kilograms. L would be, say, a meter, and that's fine. And now I can go back to the, um, the Simulink window here, this uh, model window. And I can open up the scope, and here it is over here, and then I can run it. And that nice little beep tells me, yay, everything worked. All right, so now we wanted to add in the nonlinear model, and the easiest way to do that is just to grab the whole thing, right, copy it, so Control-C, and then paste. And boom, there it is. Now, all I need to do is add the sign in. And remember, that was take the sign of theta. Um, and I didn't say this, so I should say this now. Remember what the way this integrator works that we saw in class. 
is it was theta double dot here, then I integrate to get theta dot, and then I integrate again to get theta, and that gets fed back. And this whole represents the algebra of the uh, differential equation. So I need to get the, um, the sine function in. So if I go back to the library browser, uh, I can go under math operations again, and I can look around. You see there's a bunch of stuff. But one thing I've got in here is the trigonometric function block. So I go in there, uh, paste that onto the, uh, drag that onto the model window, uh, flip the block again, go ahead and just stick it right on the line, and it automatically inserts into the wire. Now, notice if I open this up, just so you can see, you can do sine, cosine, tangent, all these different uh, trig functions, but we're going to go with sine because that's what we had. And now I can run this again. I can open up the scope, and there's the scope for the nonlinear. Here's the linear system. And they don't look for, well, they're starting to look uh, a little different. You can see by the end there. And what we did um, to compare is, is we took and subtracted the two from each other. And I can do that here just to find the difference. And this isn't very pretty, but it'll work. Take the scope again, control, drag, and scope two. And notice there's no data there until I actually run. And voila. Now, we can go ahead and rename all these things. I could say scope. I can just double click on it, and I can call it you know, linear uh, theta. I can call this one you know, nonlinear theta. Right. There's a lot of uh, options you have here to do various things. You can um, change the background color. You know, you can, that's not very useful, but <laughs> you can do that. Some of the, doing some of this is useful because uh, sometimes you want to relate blocks, but black's not very useful, i got to say. Um, so that's, uh, that's what the kind of things you can do with, uh, with, with Simulink. Um, it's pretty useful. It's a nice little tool. And remember, it ultimately is running um, ODE 4.5. Uh, and back here, I can save this, do all those kinds of things. All right.